Hello, it's Freya. And it's Odin. So we're back from 59 degrees of hope and we're showing you the snow. Yes, we've had a fair bit of snow up here these last few days. Yep, this is the snow before the blizzard in our last video. Mm -hmm. So today we are going to take you on a little tour. We are. We thought we'd take you on a tour today to the southernmost tip of the island we call home, South Ronaldsea. Yep, so we're starting off in the village, but don't worry, you're not missing anything because we're going to come back down through here and we'll explain more about the village itself then. Yeah, we're just using this as our route out to get onto the main highway. Yeah, so this road that we're on now is actually a newer road. Um, this is not uh, part of the original village. It was added on in recent times. It was. I tried to find a date, but I couldn't find a date when it was built online anywhere. Um, but yeah, when we come back, we'll take you down the, the old, the original road. Oh, it's, it's very exciting, isn't it? It is, it is. It's thrilling yeah. stuff. <laughs> so, you can see some snow around here. Now, um, we don't often get snow, do we? We don't get a lot of snow. People think that being this far north, um, because in the highlands there's obviously lots of snow, and we're further north than the highlands, so people tend to think we would get even more snow, but we don't. No, we don't. Okay, so we're coming up to the junction here. Now, if you're coming from mainland, you would come in from the left here and turn down into the village. So this left-hand road goes off towards the barriers and mainland and Kirkwall. But we're turning off right, so we're going from the tip of the island all the way down to um, Berwick. Berwick, the southernmost tip of yeah. South Ronaldsea. And um, we're coming up to the War Memorial on our left-hand side Yep. Uh, for the fallen of both world wars. And then next to it, the salubrious tip. The salubrious council tip, where I spend many a good hour at the weekend. Yeah, I imagine Odin there with a, a gang of like-minded lads gathered around. Yeah, we gather around the lit oil drum, keeping ourselves warm <laughs> and talking the stories of the old days. Yeah, something like that. So on the left-hand side there, that road that went up past the War Memorial is the one that leads over to St Peter's Kirk. It does, yeah. On the um, that would be the east side of the island. Yeah, and we've done a video about St Peter's Kirk. Haven't we, we have, yeah. It's a very yeah, nice, yeah. very nice Kirk. It's a very nice video, yeah. It's in a, it's in a very nice location. Yeah. Um, so going up here now. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take you on a tour of the island, and because it's an island with a population of only nine hundred in total, you'll see that there's lots of empty looking bits. <laughs> So, during those empty bits, don't panic. We're going to keep you entertained, aren't we? We are, we are, and we will be pointing out points of interest, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, there's lots. As we go along. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to tell you a little bit about sort of life um, on the island, um, various things that affect us, certain things that don't really affect us as much as you might think. Yeah, and if we do maybe not cover something that you have got a burning question to to have answered. Um, we love a burning <laughs> question. Um, not just about South Ronald say, but Orkney life in general, then yeah, put us a, put it in the comments and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get around to answering that in uh, a future video. Yes. Now, one thing that I want you all to note right now is that the weather on the way down the island is a little bit grey because you'll see these massive snow clouds lurking around, okay? But on the way back up, the sun comes out and it looks like an entirely different place. It's all sunlit and pretty. So just hang around for that, okay? Because it's well worth it. Yeah, it's like the old saying, four seasons in one day. Here, we can get four seasons in an hour. Yeah. At times. Yeah, something like, well, it feels like that anyway. Although I'm not quite sure where summer is sometimes. <laughs> Uh, so we're coming up here to this gathering of houses and things. It's not really a, a settlement, is it? No, no, it's not even really big enough to be a hamlet. It's just a couple of couple of houses that are quite prominent on a on a, on a, on the top of a hill. Yeah, and a little garage as well. Yeah. And so now we're we're making our way down um, towards the south part of the island. And that uh, hill that you can see coming up on the right-hand side is um, the one that's called... <gasps> now, I always forget its name. Kirky? Kirky Hill? Yeah, Kirky Hill. Yeah, Kirky Hill. Um, so, yeah, I've always noticed that. I think it's named after Captain Kirk. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to say unlikely there. I'm okay. going to score an unlikely on that one. Um, but, yeah, it's good. just got a nice rounded shape to it, that one. So, there you go. There's a better view of it there. Nice cut to that view, yes. Yeah, I know, it was a good cut, wasn't it? Um, anyway, so, uh, we thought we could talk about bus stops, didn't we? Well, yeah, because 
although there's not a lot of traffic on the roads at the moment uh, and obviously the buses don't don't run when the weather's too bad but um yeah we thought we'd talk about the the public transport we have up here and one of the little known facts um that most people find um quite interesting is um with buses you can just hail them in a way a bit like a taxi you don't have to go to a, a predetermined bus stop you can just on the side of the road put your arm out and the bus will stop for you yeah which is a really nice little feature actually because when the weather's grim you don't necessarily want to trudge to the next bus stop but yeah you'll see them dotted around we'll point one out yeah. because they're, they're very exciting and it also works as well if you're when you're getting off the bus you can just ding the bell at any point uh, and the the bus bus driver will pull over and, and let you off yeah they're very they're a nice bunch up here i think the thing you find um on the small island communities is that the vast, vast majority of people are lovely and, and helpful and kind because you can't really afford to be anything else. I mean... No, that's it. That's it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's very, very nice indeed. So we've got a, got a nice long run up now. Excellent. So, um, yeah, so as we said, here on the island, we don't really tend to get a great deal of snow because of the island climate. So um, generally our temperature range is somewhere between 5 and 15 degrees. In the depths of winter, we'll get down to around zero, minus one, maybe minus two, but mm. very little, very little chance of it being less than that. Um, and in the summer, it very rarely goes above 20 degrees. So, uh, although last year, obviously, climate change, it went, I think we had one day of 28 degrees, didn't we? It was crazy. Yeah, and you do tend to notice it, notice it up here as well. We're not, don't, not, not accustomed to it, but uh, yeah, very rare that we, we get snow uh, and, and also severe frost as well is quite, uh, mm. quite rare. So we're going out and de-icing the car. It, it does come as a bit of a shock. So, yeah, so this is, you know, fairly unusual weather for us. Um, and this is obviously, as I said, this is a, before the real snow started the next day, and then we ended up with all those blizzards. <laughs> so uh, we thought that this was snow. So <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so pertinent to that, we're going to talk a little bit about um, weather and heating, because uh, heating and power systems. Somebody asked about that on one of the other videos. Yeah, it's something that um, people are interested in and Orkney is one of the leading lights in renewable energy. We are, we're very proud of that fact and there's a lot of wind turbines around. Yeah. A lot of the kind of individual farms and things have their own wind turbine and they're quite a common sight. The tidal power is one of the things that um, Orkney has in abundance being an island surrounded by water. We have a lot of tides and uh, yeah they tap into that tidal power. Um, I always thought they just used to get the p power from the tides and the waves on the top of the water. No, 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 no. It's from the water column beneath the surface. Yeah, it is. Uh, and they can use that locally, but more importantly, they can actually uh, export it. Um, they can, not quite sure how, transfer it into hydrogen, into containers, which then can be shipped to wherever it's, wherever it's needed. Yeah, it's really clever what they can do with renewable powers these days. So, uh, yeah, coming up on here now, we've got this turning off to the left, which goes down to Windwick and Olaf's Wood. Now, Olaf's Wood is the green area of trees that you can see there, and then there's another section. And behind it is Windwick. Um, so, Olaf's Wood was started in the 1970s by Helen and Stephen Manson with um, Olaf Dennison. And uh, he sadly died in, well, a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite recently. And, um, yeah, so it's 45 acres of woodland. and um, I think you'll find that's four and a half Four acres. and a half. 45. <laughs> <laughs> 45 acres, that would have been some, uh, some woodland. That would be one hell of a bit of woodland. <laughs> yeah, but, um, no, four and a half acres. Um, and, yeah, it's just beautiful. If you ever get the chance to come, then definitely go and see Olaf's Wood because it's... Uh, cool place yeah it's a lovely place to go and have a have a picnic um especially on a, on a sunny day which we do do get up in orkney yeah, it's very it's very shaded in there um and yeah it's got a nice little burn running through it and it's uh, yeah it's a very relaxing place to go yeah it is it's really pretty um and great place to take kids as well because of mm. the little pathways and things children love it but um yeah so we're coming up around this corner here so you can still see a lot of these glowering clouds around but there is some blue skies and when we get down the bottom end of the island you will notice 
that um, it does convert to a bit of sunshine and look entirely different. So, uh, yeah, you'll notice the, the roads are pretty good actually up here, aren't they? They are, when you consider it's uh, not a widely used road, this one. It's very, very nicely tarmac, nice and smooth, and it holds up under the, under the snow and ice very well. Yeah. Um, now, you might think that the roads are particularly empty at the moment because of the snow, but uh, that, this is how <laughs> they usually look, isn't it? Yeah, this could be, uh, this could be rush hour, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, it's very rare that you're going to get a build-up of traffic, especially down this this end of the island mm. i mean the island as a whole has 900 people on it so um and they are quite spread out so yeah you you don't get a lot of traffic on the road but that's one of the beauties of it it is yeah i mean even in kirkwall obviously the main uh, capital um yeah very rare that you get a traffic jam there to be perfectly honest well you do get some traffic but yeah you mm -hmm. get some cute but it's nothing like down down south in england because obviously we're incomers so uh yeah that's it now as we're getting down towards the tip of the island uh over on the left hand side coming up in a bit there's a turn off which would would have taken you up to the tomb of the eagles well it still would because it's still there but I mean, it's yeah. still there not open though no um so it was discovered in 1958 it's very famous a stone age tomb mm. and they found 16,000 human bones from 324 people yeah none of the skeletons were intact a little um, bit disturbing, <laughs> not going to lie. But it was mixed in with bones and talons from 8 to 20 birds. Uh, about 725 bird bones were there, which is where the name Tomb of the Eagles comes from. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was in use for around a millennia. Um, so, yeah, it was a cool place. So now we are entering this little settlement down here of uh, Berwick. We've just gone past the little kirk, and this is the kirkyard. And it's not my finest bit of filming, I admit, but uh, you'll see it again on the left-hand side. There, there it, is. it is. With the little bell tower. And uh, this is a farm from the settlement as well. And uh, then we will be into the harbour. That's it. And the, the actual name was first recorded around 1225 uh, as Bardvik. Yeah. And Bardvik means... Um, oh, what does it actually mean? I can't remember now. Well, it, come, it obviously comes from the Norse, similar to Reykjavik and places... And places Grindavik. Like Grindavik. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's part of that Norse heritage. Yeah, because Vik meant bay, I think, didn't it? I think it did. Because it meant bay on the end of the promontory, uh, because this is the tip of the island. So, uh, yeah, we're entering the harbour proper now and uh, just circling round... Just to give you a full 360 panoramic view. Yes. And uh, we're just going to turn again in a second. And uh, we're just going to show you some of the fishing paraphernalia here. So these are the lobster pots, the fishing nets, the ropes and things. Because obviously this harbour is still used. Not as much as it was. And now here we are at the, um, the top of the hill here. We are, we are. Um, yeah, fairly recently there had been a ferry, a foot passenger ferry that would run from John O'Groats um, and it would have been the shortest journey to get to ourselves, but that's no longer running. No, unfortunately it had to stop um, during Covid and never managed to get going again, so uh, it's a bit sad. But you get a good view here of the Pentland Firth, which is a notorious stretch of water because it's so dangerous. There's whirlpools and eddies. The sea floor goes up and down like a yo-yo. Um, it's, yeah, it's a crazy place. Very beautiful, though. And there in the distance, we just not here, but previously we saw Stroma, which is an uninhabited island. Uh, which has had a Norse presence from around a thousand years ago. Yeah, it was inhabited by real people until... Uh, kind of mid last century, but um, yeah, the population declined. But uh, yeah, so this is the uh, the boarding for that ferry, um, the passenger ferry that used to go um, from the mainland to here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can see it going up and down with the tide. But what you'll notice most of all, I hope, is that the <laughs> sun's come out. It has. It, it certainly looks a lot brighter now. It could yeah. almost be two separate days. It could almost, apart from the fact there's a bit of snow <laughs> on the ground. But yeah, it does make everything look better. So we're going to leave the harbour now, and you'll notice the difference with the sunshine. The, just the colours just glow. That kind of brown colour of the, the, the grasslands and everything this time of year. Um, under this winter low sun, it really does 
just glow. It's fantastic. And you'll probably find you're recognising a lot of the uh, the views that you're seeing here because you've already been down here once today already. <laughs> yep, you'll know it like the back of your <laughs> hand. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to go back through this little farm and we'll go back past the little kirk as well. Um, so, yeah, as we're going on our way back, we will we'll think we'll discuss... Uh, the differences between Orkney and Shetland. Oh, the rivalry. We tend to people people tend to sort of clump it clump it together. Those two islands to the to the north of Scotland, um, but um, yeah, there certainly are certainly are differences, uh, and there's certainly a healthy rivalry between us. Yeah, there's a lot of sports um, events that take place between the two sets of islands. Um, and they're always hotly contested and they matter a lot to people, which is as it should be. But um, yeah, the, the thing that we've got in common more than anything is the ancestry because uh, Orkney and Shetland used to belong to Norway um, and they were given as a dowry along with um, Margaret. And uh, yeah, it's, which is an astonishing thing really. So if it hadn't been for that, when I think she married King James, uh, we would have been... Nordic. Yeah, it, yeah. Strange how these things happen. Um, when you think how close we are to the mainland of Scotland, um, the fact that yeah, uh, for a long period of time um, we weren't weren't part of Scotland. No, nope. and you you can hear that in the local dialect. So the the local language um, is much closer to the the kind of Nordic language than it is to mainland Scottish really um, although obviously there's been a lot of mixing with mainland Scotland now so oh, we're coming up to a crest of a hill and you get this quite quite a lot on the roads here yeah and this is the viewpoint now so we're going to stop here because uh, it's a fantastic place that's what you do at viewpoints you do you stop you view a point <laughs> uh, but also because the sun had come out it was just lovely so um, we're going to show you a little bit of what you can see so we're panning round here on the left hand side, left to right, and uh, we're looking across the entrance here to Scapa Flow. So Scapa Flows would be on your right here, and we're looking across to Hoy, um, Long Hope, um, and that kind of area. Um, you can't quite see as much of Hoy as you might mm -hmm. like, because there's a dirty great big snow cloud there. But that is quite often happens with with, with Hoy. It's, it's up in the clouds a lot of the time, being the the highest point on the islands yeah but you can see the the color of the water is just fantastic under that blue winter sky it just looks amazing so now we are going to go and have a quick look at the actual beacon mm, we are and it's uh basically it's inscribed with place names and the distances that they are now, admittedly, from my images here, it's a bit difficult to see, but <laughs> you have to take my word for it that marked around the dial are the directions that you would follow and look out in to see those places. So it's marked with New York and Stockholm and Paris and how many miles away they are. Yeah, and also, of course, places on the island themselves. Yes, yeah, so Kirkwall's on there as well as Sydney, Australia. Yeah. Uh, so here we've just stopped to look across. So this is Windwick. These are the cliffs of Windwick that we mentioned earlier. So when you go to Olaf's Wood, you then turn off to Windwick. Um, and this is some rough water that was out there at the same time. Because it was quite windy, wasn't it, that day? Yeah, it was. It was. And it doesn't take much to get those waves whipping up yeah. onto the shore. So we're going to turn here and we're going to continue our journey back towards the Hope. So yeah, with uh, Orkney and Shetland then, um, we've got geographical differences as much as anything, haven't we? I mean, they're 50 miles further north than us. I know, but sometimes it seems a lot further. It certainly does. Um, so yeah, we we definitely have less extreme weather. The, the Orkney Islands are gentler than Shetland, aren't they? They are, yeah. And I think also in terms of the, the, the terrain as well, I think we're, we have a more gentle terrain as opposed to their rugged terrain yeah i mean the scenery in shetland is spectacular i mean obviously it's not as good as ours on orkney but um it is stunning scenery but uh, i think overall it's a quieter place would you say i would do i would do but they also do seem to have a lot of murders up there which um <laughs> i'm quite glad we don't have that many in orkney it seems for the size of the island a lot of people are getting killed up there yeah 
yeah, of course, he is referring to the drama <laughs> series Shetland and not to real life there. Oh, I thought it was True Crimes, that uh, programme. No, 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 okay. it's not that dangerous up there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, we often get linked together, but there are there are some, some big differences. Yeah, we like watching the, uh, the weather forecast, the weather maps on the television, don't we? Because um, they either have Kirkwall um, or they'll be showing the um, Lurwick. Um, and we hope that it's always going to be Kirkwall, don't we? <laughs> yeah, but almost always it's Lyric. Yeah, or Fair Isle. Fair Isle comes up quite often on <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, because they want to do the extremes, and of course we're just below the extreme. So, But yeah, anyway, so um, we're very lucky here because it is a stunning place and just that little bit gentler and, and kinder, especially in the summer when we have some fantastic weather. Yeah, I think we get the best of, best of both worlds. We do indeed, we do indeed. Um, although we do, of course, sometimes still get some um, pretty rough weather, as we did with the blizzards. I mean, I hope you look to our next video. Uh, well, the last video it would be, but in terms of timeline, it came just after this. Um, but showing the blizzards that we had. Yeah, that was quite, uh, quite impressive. We don't get too many blizzards and snow showers up here. This is true, this is true. But um, yeah, we do get some... Oh, we stopped here because there was uh, some creature, like I think it was a rabbit that was in the ditch and we thought it was going to run across the road. <laughs> <laughs> so we braked and then it didn't, it changed its mind. No, wasn't it a stag? I thought it was a stag. Uh, no, <laughs> not a stag. Um, but yeah, um, and now I think um, before we go any further, coming up here on the left, we've got a turning off in a minute, haven't we? That goes off to Sandwich. We do, yeah, it goes off to Sandwich, which is another lovely viewpoint. Yeah, Sandwick's amazing as well. I mean, it's all amazing, but um, yeah, Sandwick's gorgeous. So yeah, that will be coming up just on the on the bend here over to the left-hand side. And we're, we're turning right now as you make our way back towards St Margaret's Hope. Look at the difference in colour in the fields. So some of the fields are quite green, and then this one ahead is just much whiter. It depends on the sunlight, isn't it? If the mm. sun catches the hills, it... It will melt the snow away, and in the shade, the, the snow remains. It does indeed. But, um, yeah, so in the rough weather, um, we become more of a, an individual island again, don't we? Because um, the barriers get closed if the weather's really rough. We do. Obviously, Orkney itself is an island, and then we're a separate island off of there. And although we are connected to the mainland by the Churchill barriers, yeah, the bad weather, they will shut the barriers, and we will be um, very remote. Yeah. Because Orkney is a group of 70 islands, um, only some of them are inhabited, I think it's 11, something mm. like that. Um, but yeah, and an overall population of about 20,000, but the vast majority of them are on the mainland um, in Stromness and Kirkwall. So uh, yeah, as we said, just about 900 on this island that you're on now, on South Ronaldsea. And then if the weather's bad, sometimes we won't get the deliveries and the boats won't be able to make it over. So, yeah, yeah the, the supermarkets may run a bit short. So basically it means that uh, South Ronaldsea needs to be able to operate as an island community. So that means, for instance, that in our doctor's surgery, which is fantastic, by the way, can I just add lovely people in there, um, they actually have a dispensing chemist because... Uh, they have to be able to have access to the, the medicines and things here and uh, the inhabitants need to have access if they need it. So yeah, I see one of the only places, well one mm. of the very few places that still gets that. Yeah, I think that's another perk of uh, living in a, a small community is that yeah, we have a very excellent uh, doctor surgery there, can be seen very quickly. Oh yeah, this is just cutting across here to show you a little bit of Sandwick there that you can see. It's just the sea, really. We mm -hmm. we are going to do a video about it. It will be upcoming. We've got one planned for Sandwick and one for Windwick. We do so indeed. We do we indeed. If there's any other areas of the island you would like us to go to, let us know in the comments. Mm. Can't do the team of the team, the tomb of the eagles yet, because uh, but they are talking about reopening that. Mm. So we've got our fingers crossed. And then um, here, as we go past another bus stop, we start opening up again, and you can see the village in the distance on the left-hand side here. And there was a really dirty black <laughs> snow cloud coming in here, uh, with a lot of snow in it. It looked like a lot of snow could be dropped from that from that cloud. Yeah, it definitely was. Later in the day, uh, when we got back, it started snowing again, and that was that cloud there. 
but uh, yeah so we're coming past here um there's a load of trees We've got here the golf club on the left hand side yep. to margaret's golf club which is uh yes yeah, quite i'm not a golfer myself but it does look a nice course it does it seems to be very well looked after there you go you can see how dark it's getting over the village as that snow cloud just uh, really descends and now we're going to turn off left here so if you remember we said that this road that we're turning into now um, as we come into the village this is a newer road the original entrance to the village was actually that road on the right there um, which goes down so we're going to come up that one in a minute and you can see the snow falling from that snow cloud it is the weather seems to be closing in and we can see the hills in the distance are starting to visibly disappear <laughs> if you can visibly disappear yeah now just to the right normally you'd be able to see quite a nice view out over the harbour of uh, st margaret's hope and you'd be able to see the pentaline ferry sat there but uh, you can see none of that <laughs> now so this is good uh, so we're coming down here and um, the doctor surgery is actually off to the left here in a minute it's one of those stone buildings you could see this big white patch here is the car park for the golf club. And uh, yeah, we're coming down here. Uh, the blacksmiths is here on the left hand side with a couple of other little tiny cottages. Um, and I cannot remember why we stopped here. I think it was for the view between the houses out into the out into the harbour. It oh, sort of yes. framed it quite well, we yes. thought. Yes, we didn't show you it in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, and ahead of us you can see a propeller. Now this is used as the bus stop. Um, so uh, yeah, and that's the, the harbour there. And you can just see the boat there at the end of the harbour on the left hand side. And so now yeah, we're turning into back road. Back road. So we've got the post office that we're going to pass in a minute on the right hand side. Post office and convenience store for all your goods. Yeah, they're very nice in there as well. And then we've got the Murray Arms, fantastic seafood, a lot of it locally caught. Yeah, very nice uh, public house. Yeah, and the Bellevue Inn. Um, on the left-hand side. Yeah, they're lovely as well. Nice guest house. Fantastic breakfast Margaret does in the Bellevue mm -hmm. Inn. Uh, so we're coming up the road now. So remember, this would have been this the main road of the village um, before they built the new sort of bypass road, if you like. And coming up to the end here, if you go straight on, the Marengo Gardens that we love so much are on the left-hand side there. And there's a community hall. And then we go past Dawes on the right-hand side, another one of our lovely smashing local stores. Yeah, they're really, everybody's so nice everywhere. And Robertson's on the left, which is a very famous bar, cafe... Coffee house. ...kind of place. It's lovely, especially in the winter. Um, oh, and electric charging points there. Electric charging points in the car park there. Because um, we are modern as heck here. We are indeed. Not overly used, unfortunately, but um, yeah. yeah, we do have them there. And then this is St Margaret's Kirk on the left there, after yeah. which the village is named. It is indeed, and we've come full circle now and are joining up back on the new road. Now, you've been on this road now twice <laughs> before, so you'll know this one like a native and we turn and you'll see now that you can see almost nothing uh, beyond this group of houses on the left here if we'd have carried on long enough then yeah the visibility would have been zero <laughs> um, it's clearing a little bit over to the uh, other side though so that's not too bad so uh, we are getting near the end of the video now so we would like to remind you of a couple of little things that you can do to really help us i'm sure you all know what they are oh, sing along with know, us yeah <laughs> everybody one two three we would like you to like, like the video we would like you to subscribe to the channel it only takes a second it's absolutely free costs you nothing and i promise you that we will not flood <laughs> your feed with loads of loads of videos we won't. Um, but um, yeah we'd really appreciate it as I say, let us know in the comments as to how you think this video went, uh, other areas Be of, nice. the, of the islands that you would like us to, to cover. Yep, and uh, we're turning now into School Road, so past the little blacksmiths there on the left, Blacksmiths Museum, and uh, as we go up here, we're just going to go up to the top and then we can turn around and come back down. So there's a tennis court here on the left-hand side and a bowling club. There's indeed, yeah. 
a very and athletic area. The uh, we're coming up ahead. You see the old school building there on the right with its little bell turret. Um, the new school is behind that, but um, yeah. So there you go, and we're just going to go past, and then we're going to turn around and come back down. So you've come full circle. And here indeed. we are again, and the snow started again. <laughs> but yeah, so thanks so much, everyone, for watching. So goodbye from me. And from me.